who knows the greatest commandment? Commandment? Who, do, who knows the greatest commandment? Who, which? Love? Yeah. Loving God. Doing what? Loving God. She kind of uh, says that, uh, why can't you close down this uh, thing? If it is the one that is uh, bringing perfect. Because I must say, I'm, I'm the poorest. But in my heart, I'm the richest. <laughs> Good. My name is Sir Clement Tombati, currently uh, being uh, the chief uh, in Nairobi West. I lived uh, in Kibera, I've uh, worked in Kibera, I've uh, traded in Kibera for the last 29 years. Munandraje? Ah, I was born in a, a family of uh, ten, being uh, the second last. Of course, we were very, very poor. My father was uh, a tailor and a patient at the same time. Uh, of course, uh, he knew we needed education but he didn't have the capacity to take us to school. So we had to kind of uh, on and off going to school. Today we are in school, today we are not in school. Uh, there is a lot of uh, poverty in this uh, slum and it, it requires uh, um, some kind of uh, God is intervention to, to, to at least to change life here. When you we were entering, you found a young boy who is supposed to be in school. That's the challenge we face. I asked him why are you not in school. What he told me is that uh, uh, he was requested by uh, by his mother to take care of their uh, his young sibling. You see, that's how they live here. They do not value education. It is better for this child to do the, the, the house calls so that at least they, so that, uh, they, they get a chance to go and look for food. It is better that way than a child uh, go to school, okay? It, this parent is forgetting about the future of these children and uh, the parent think that, uh, that uh, that's how to solve the problem of, uh, of tomorrow. Not knowing that uh, 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 he uh, is killing the, the future of the, the, the child. And I happen to know very well, having uh, uh, brought up in a very poor background, the best uh, medicine to uh, poverty was education. On stage, Community Pillar Center, ready to present to you Class P61C, Akamba Folk Dance. It is sung during the planting season by young men and women from the Akamba community. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome. Siana e? Siana. So I decided to come up with a, a children center where we could uh, uh, find a way of uh, assisting uh, children from poor families. I love you again. Another siso. Na ito nini? Siso. Mumoja na kaapa. Mugina na kaapa. Kamu jaku nyawa uju kasiba. Oh na angusho tu. Ona angusho tu na ona katu kuju. Na kamu mesiba mekuna visuri. Ona ona vaja nini? Ona enda chini. Sindio? Na kamu uwe ujakuna visuri. Ona enda chu. Now as you can see, this is where I live. I decided to live around here so that to keep watch uh, over the children here. It will come here very early in the morning to uh, ensure that they have reported uh, all of them. Nobody has got any problem. Every staff has reported before I go to work. Now we are there to take a borage. I'm feeding uh, 150 uh, children who are in the queue. They take breakfast and they take lunch, of course. Now I'm going to serve them. Yeah. Borage. Yeah, they, I'm going to serve them borage. This borage time now. And uh, they really like uh, borage. They become very happy when this uh, borage time. Now let me serve them and then you'll see. A little did, uh, did I know that uh, it was not a, a, a walk in the back. Of course, uh, uh, in, a, in a setup like this, they need uh, uh, books, 
they need uh, food because we came to discover that uh, by nice food could not, could not stay uh, in school. Uh, when I discovered that uh, it was uh, such a heavy uh, uh, assignment, uh, I decided to channel everything that I get from my salary uh, in support of uh, uh, this centre. Of course, it has come to the extent uh, where I cannot uh, get balanced that in my, in my, my home. There is one thing that my wife says. At this point, uh, she says that I've uh, sacrificed a lot to, to the community. I've forgotten the, their family, which is very true. They don't get, get everything that they need. That's where we have balances in schools. Then I have a son in Istare, where we pay 140,000 by year. Right now, I think it's uh, almost 70,000 balance, and he's going to see this year. Sometimes, I get some loans, I, I clear part of it. After two, three days, two, two three years, I go for a top-up because I don't know how many top-ups I've got. My salary now is 10,000 shillings. That's not what I had because of the top-ups. She kind of uh, sees that, uh, why can't you close down this uh, thing if it is the one that is uh, bringing poverty? Because I must say I'm, I'm the poorest. I'm the poorest, but in my heart, I'm the richest. There are people who have uh, big cars. There are people who live in uh, very nice uh, places. There are people who have uh, very nice phones. They wear very smart. Uh, but that person, if that person has not taken uh, a child to school, uh, is uh, irresponsible, uh, that is. That person is far much poorer than you, who is uh, educating a, a child. It's important to, to understand uh, the, lives, the life that uh, experienced by the people living in Kibera. Of course, uh, slums, it is uh, widely known that uh, people who live here are uh, poor people. And it is very true. It is good for uh, those people who have been blessed by God to remember that we have uh, people around who require support. They let them come around and try to assist where they can. It doesn't matter how small they, they can do it. Uh, because uh, there is one thing I learned from uh, Mata Calcutta, of, uh, Mata Teresia of Calcutta. Uh, she said one thing, uh, and I quote her, that uh, a drop of water in the sea can be seen as a very minute thing, which cannot make a difference in the sea. But uh, if you take away that drop of water from that sea, the truth is that that sea will not be full. It will be less that drop. So anything that you do, anything, if you get some support of any kind, it will make a very big difference to the lives of these uh, children. I'm hopeful because uh, one, I have faith in God. God will never uh, leave me. He knows the job that I'm doing. I don't see. He knows the job I'm doing. He knows the sacrifice I'm doing. I don't see how he can leave me. Only that I happen to know very well that uh, God has us play, uh, players, but he, he has us players at his own time, at his own uh, good time. So I believe one day, and I hope that as we live, we will come to talk about it. God is going to intervene, and uh, the children of this, uh, this community will have every reason to smile. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed our first episode of Inspire Kenya. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media pages for future episodes. A huge thank you to Edwin Ochieng, the man behind the camera, and David Moridi for the amazing edits. My name is Lynn Googie. Till next time, bye-bye.